All right, well, hey, thank you all very much uh, for coming here this afternoon to talk about our 14th uh, Leopold Conservation Award. Now, our farmers and ranchers here in Nebraska were the original conservationists because they wanted to pass along that family farmer ranch to the next generation. And with 90% of Nebraska, actually over 90% of Nebraska being owned by private people, it's important, and in fact the most effective conservation is gonna be done when it's done by people in the private sector. And that's really one of the things that the Leopold Award recognizes, that it's our farmers and ranchers who are taking that initiative and really working within that land ethic that Aldo Leopold described, uh, you know, one of our nation's premier conservationists, about how you treat the land. But it really, again, lines up already with what they were already doing because they wanted to make sure they could pass along that family farmer ranch. And so they wanted to make sure they were taking care of the land and taking care of the animals. So it really is an important award that we've got here today to help recognize those folks who are doing just that and really holding them up as examples for other folks to emulate. So with me here today, I've got Homer Buell, who's representing the Sand County Fund Foundation. I've got uh, Steve Martin, who's with AFAM. We've got our award winners here, which we haven't announced their names yet, so that's the big drum roll. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, I want to thank uh, both of you uh, for being here today and helping to sponsor this because uh, this is a, a sponsored event, and it's great to have the participation of you all to do this. Uh, Cargill is also one of our platinum sponsors, as well as the Nebraska Environmental Trust. Uh, Farm Service Agency is one of our gold sponsors, and we've got a number of other uh, sponsors who are a part of this as well, including Nebraska Game and Parks. So again, this is uh, one of the things that I look forward to every year to be able to help recognize uh, the, our farmers and ranchers here in the state for this great award and really living up to that land ethic that Aldo Leopold described so many years ago. So without further ado, though, I am going to announce this year's winner of the Leopold Conservation Award. Oh, and actually, I should point out, Homer Buell has been a past award winner. So it's also great, doubly great to have him up here as well. So uh, our award winner this year is going to be Russ and Angela Sundstrom, who are from Lincoln County. They've got the Broken Box Ranch there. Their daughter, Cheyenne, is joining us with us uh, here as well. And it's a great story. So Russ's ancestors moved here from Sweden in 1904. And so Russ is the fourth generation that is on the Broken Box Ranch. And they are practicing innovative uh, methods to be able to help take care of that ranch. So for example, some of the things that Russ does, Russ and Angela do, that has helped them win this award, for example, is they do mob grazing. So it's really intense grazing by the herd on a certain part of the land and then they move off. And what the benefit of that is, is it then allows uh, about a year before uh, the cattle come back to that area. And that allows the foliage to grow back and it, again, really uh, gives the, the land the time to recover there. Uh, their land is hilly and so it's prone to erosion. And so Russ works very <clears throat> carefully on things like prescribed burns. Uh, really tries to root out some of the invasive species like the red cedars. And that also has the side benefit of making sure that he's actually restoring the land back to its more native appearance. And that is benefiting not only his land, but also the animals that rely upon the native grass, for example, and the native plants to be able to survive. So that's a great example of some of the things that uh, Russ is doing there. He also works with Nebraska Game and Parks on their open, wa uh, open uh, ground, open waters program to be able to allow hunters to come in and enjoy the property. He's got 20 acres set aside just for uh, uh, bees and for butterflies. So <clears throat> all sorts of innovative things that Russ and Angela are doing to be able to take care of the land, really return it to its native state, and by doing that, again, having that opportunity to be able to pass it on to Cheyenne in future years, who would then be the fifth generation on the land. So this is a $10,000 award, so it's a, it's a very exciting prize to be able to uh, be able to share. Uh, again, it's one of my favorite things all year long to be able to do is to recognize our farmers and ranchers uh, for the great work they're doing. And we're grateful to be able to recognize the Sundstrom family here today. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Steve Martin, who's going to say a little bit more. Uh, Homer will talk for a little bit, and then we'll give, uh, we'll give uh, Russ and Angela a chance to talk a little bit about what they do on their operation as well. So Steve? All right. 
Uh, thank you, Governor, um, and congratulations to Russ, Angela, and Cheyenne. Uh, what a great day for uh, this award, for what they've done, what they continue to do on their uh, ranching and farming operation. And I, I think just uh, thinking about the, the award and what they've done and their story, um, if I tie it back down uh, to AFAN, um, which is the Alliance for the Future of Agriculture in Nebraska, we're a, a group that's supported by all the commodity groups plus a lot of private uh, sponsorship and, and it's really all in cooperation. Um, so it's everybody working together um, to further um, agriculture in Nebraska, uh, make sure that uh, we have a, a viable uh, economy in the farming sector in the future. And so looking at um, what Russ and, and Angela have done um, with the things that they've done on their, on their ranch and then how they take that message out to other people. Um, that spirit of cooperation um, really is a testament to what they're trying to do and, and not just to benefit themselves, but to benefit the entire uh, farming and ranching community. And I think as we learn more about them, see what they've done um, over the years on their operation, um, I think there's takeaways from, for all of us, um, let alone the fact that they are uh, recognized as an award winner here today uh, and in the future. So um, again, congratulations uh, to you all and uh, very honored to, to be here and, and, uh, and meet with you and, and see you've received this award. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Homer. I might say just a, a couple of words about the Sand County Foundation. I am on the board of, of Sand County. We're an organization that started a little over 50 years ago. And it was a group of landowners that lived and had land around Aldo Leopold's fame shack. And they wanted to protect that area, so they started the Sand County Foundation. One of those landowners was Reed Coleman. Now Reed, his father, Tom, knew Aldo Leopold. They were both hunting enthusiasts, you know, outdoorsmen, loved the land. And so Tom bought the land right next to Aldo Leopold's farm. And <clears throat> Reed grew up with the with a Leopold children, grew up with the family. And he, you know, really developed, I think, a, really a feeling for Aldo Leopold's land ethic. And, and he, was, he started as our first chairman, did that for almost 50 years. And for all of us that have served on the board through those years, I think he, uh, we really used him as an example uh, to do our mission, which is to enable and, and give, uh, you know, let landowners tell their story, give, enable them to do that, and let people know how they really use their land ethic to care for the land. You know, usually when we do these presentations, I talk a little bit about how Le Leopold defined conservation. But I think today I'll, I'll talk a little bit about conser you know, conservationist. Uh, Darla, <coughs> excuse me, my wife, Darla and I, <coughs> a, couple of, oh, a couple of weeks ago were traveling. And we had both read uh, all the Leopold's same book, The Sand County Almanac, but we decided to get an audio book so as we were driving, we were listening to the audio book, and I think it was maybe, I mean, those of you that have read it, he goes through the months of the year and talks about his farm there and different observation he makes, uh, and, and a philosopher as well. But in, in, in that um, setting, you know, he defined what he thought conservationists are. And I'm, I'm going to read that, one of his quotes. He said, I have read many definitions of what is a conservationist, and have written not a few myself, but I suspect that the best one is written not with a pen, but with an ax. And I think he was using the ax as a metaphor, but he went ahead to say, it is a matter of what a man thinks about while, while chopping, or while deciding what to chop. A conservationist is one who is humbly aware that with each stroke, he is writing his signature on the face of the land. Signatures, of course, differ whether written with an ax or with a pen. And this is as it should be. And I think as I read the application that this family had put in, and, and then meeting them today and visiting with them, I can see they wrote a very good signature on the land that they, that they manage and care for. 
And I think they should be very proud of what they've done, and I think we all should be. So with that, I'll turn it back to the governor. Well, actually, uh, I think now we're going to uh, give Russ and Angela an opportunity to say something. Congratulations on the award. Great work on what you're doing. So please tell us a little bit about your operation. I wish public speaking was as easy as land improvement. <laughs> uh, I'm fourth generation on the place. <clears throat> uh, like the governor said, my daughter Cheyenne will be the fifth. Uh, we're quite taken back by the honor that's been bestowed upon us. Um, we'd like to give God all the credit and the glory. <clears throat> we're primarily a cow-calf operation. Um, I've lived there about 25 years. My grandparents were on the place, so that's where I spent my summers. Um, Um, we're also very thankful for all the partners that have been involved that have helped us along the way. Without that, we would have only developed a small amount of acres. Instead, we've been able to treat the whole place as a whole. Um, I have one story and then I'm done. <laughs> uh, probably three or four years ago, my daughter Cheyenne was checking cows with me one afternoon. <clears throat> Nothing had been said for quite a while, and out of the blue, she says, Daddy, I just want you to treat, teach me to do one thing. I want you to teach me to run this ranch someday. After I picked myself up off the floor of the pickup, I thought, training starts now. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>